Hey everyone, in this new video, we're going to talk about one of my current favorite gadgets that I have added to my home network and it has been an absolutely delightful product to have. It is the Firewall Purple Firewall. I was looking for a personal firewall for my home network with all the devices and the IoT devices. I wanted to put in some geo blocks on my network so that certain devices would not be talking to certain countries in the world which are known for nefarious activities. And I was also setting up a home server, <coughs> so I really wanted to to add some control and visibility into what traffic is coming in and out of my network as well as uh, some of my specific devices. I got the Firewall of Purple uh, because it was affordable and available compared to the Ubiquiti Dream Machine which is expensive. I have to invest in an entirely Ubiquiti ecosystem even though the Alien is a part of the Ubiquiti uh, company the products don't talk to each other so it, it would have been a heavier lift to go down the Ubiquiti path. I got the Firewall of Purple and I I'm so happy with it. It works as it is advertised. It was directly plug and play. All I had to do was switch my current amplifier router to act in bridge mode. And then I just had to plug and play the, the firewall uh, device. And that was it. Or I did not have to change anything on any of my Wi-Fi connected devices or my wired connected devices. Everything just worked as is. All I had to do was take one RJ45 cable from my ISP connection into the firewall and then from the firewall to the router and it was all seamless. And now I have a lot of visibility into my network. The firewall has a web application as well as a as, as well as an iOS application. Both are at par. It, I have the same fidelity in terms of what I can do, what I can see from both of these uh, from both of these applications and it has been super helpful for me. Uh, I am using DNS over HTTPS for my iPhones. I'm using the uh, the VPN feature that I have. I'm using AdGuard that the firewall enables. I've also grouped a bunch of uh, Apple TV devices and I have kept them out of the, the AdGuard because there are some TV providers that require advertisements to be played. So, and it was conflicting. So I was able to group a bunch of devices, not have these restrictions on them. But as my iPhones, my laptops, everything else on my network is a little bit more protected. So it's been a fantastic uh, addition to my home network. As I said, plug and play, uh, affordable, easy to, to configure, uh, gives you a lot of visibility into your network. And if you are, a, uh, are an enthusiast who wants to know a little bit more about your network, this is definitely the device for you. I set up my home server. It immediately started giving me alerts on when when there were malware websites that were trying to access my home server, it auto-blocked everything and then I was able to geo-block and I, I was able to add in a lot more traffic blocks for going in and out of my, my network. So it's been a fantastic device. Let's take a look at some of the, the web application and the iOS app features. And I cannot recommend this product enough to anybody who, who has a lot of devices on the network and is interested in a little bit of uh, network security. So definitely check out the Firewalla Purple Firewall. So this is the Firewalla device in action. You can see it is really compact, really small, and for a small device like this, it's got a lot packed into it. For comparison, this is a Raspberry Pi 4 in a case. This Raspberry Pi uh, powers my home assistant. And the Firewalla comes with pretty basic ports. It's very easy to set up. One wire goes into my router in bridge mode. One wire goes into my ISP RJ45 and then here's uh, power and that's about it set it up once goes into a box and does exactly what it's supposed to next we look into the web app and the ios app all right so um this is the the firewall web app and you can also see the iphone app that's on the on the right side of the screen so i've got both of them so you can compare and contrast between all the features that you have you can see on the web app i've got like a ultra wide screen so i can see this entire thing spanning my uh, my monitor you can see the top uploads that uh, i have the top downloads that i have this Xbox Live is probably the 13.7 GB is the Lies of P 12.7 GB update that had come out yesterday. That's what this is. Uh, the YouTube up uploads are probably all the videos that I have been uploading for YouTube. You can see the top devices by download. Mark II is my uh, is my desktop. TrueNAS is my server. Home Assistant is my Home Assistant server. Uh, iPhone. So definitely I'm 
a heavy user of uh, the downloads and the uploads on my network currently. You can see the data transfer speed, blah, 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 all that good stuff. I've got the exact same thing um, with, the the, with the blocked flows and all the other in information on the iPhone screen as well as uh, on the web app. I think there's a little bit of a difference in some of the data, which uh, is probably just, uh, it's interesting that there is some uh, deviation in the data. You can see 23% of the block flows here, but the phone app shows 26.1%. Uh, I don't know what is leading to that, but just something uh, to, to look into. I've got the network performance on my, on my iPhone app. You can see the download speeds and the upload speeds. Uh, let's take a look at the devices tab. Uh, you can see the live throughput on the iPhone app. Let's go into the devices tab. Uh, you can see the groups on the iPhone app more clearly, whereas here is just all the devices. And if I wanted to see groups, I have to go into a different tab. Uh, whereas on the iPhone app, I've got all devices, groups, and networks uh, just there as well. Um, let's see, target list. This is something that I am using quite a bit. Log4j, OISD, uh, what else? I think I'm using DShield and DNS over HTTPS as well. Some of the rules that I've got uh, set up, you can, as I said, OISD, I've got it. I think I've paused it for some reason. It was because uh, Paramount Plus and some of the other ad networks are causing a lot of conflict. At one point, OISD wouldn't even let me go on LinkedIn on uh, on any of my devices. So I had to do some root cause analysis uh, by going into what was being blocked and why it was being blocked and then figuring out that I can allow that specific rule. And that's how I was able to get LinkedIn on all my devices. I don't know why OISD was blocking LinkedIn. That's just something that uh, only they know. Uh, but anyways, uh, pretty interesting. You can see all the alarms that I've been getting. Um, as you can see, let's see, these are all the, let's look at the blocked flows on my, uh, on the iOS app. So you can see that Century Link was blocked. I can allow it, I can diagnose it, and it will tell me why it was blocked. Uh, blocked by firewall, uh, by firewaller, because blah, blah, blah. Bridge one is not open to external. So that's probably why it was blocked. Okay, that makes sense, and you can allow it. So yes, there are a lot of uh, things that have been blocked, but it allows you to go in and see what, uh, why that particular traffic flow was blocked, and then you can allow it. That's how I knew why LinkedIn was being blocked uh, on my uh, on my devices. Uh, let's see, you can go through social, porn, video, you can figure out what network traffic is happening. You've got direct rules that you can apply on specific devices. So for example, if on Home Assistant, I wanted to do any of these blocks, I can just do them from one tap and I can enable or disable them. Ad block is globally on. I can block all these different things. So it's pretty interesting that the iPhone app is very handy. It's very nifty. It is extremely user intuitive. Uh, it took me a little bit to figure out where I need to go to open certain ports and uh, uh, block certain ports, but the, the documentation was helpful and it get, got me over that hurdle. But anything else outside of just specific configuration, all this data flow about the different devices, throughput, all these things, the app makes it super easy. The web interface makes it super easy. Um, and you know, just for somebody who likes who likes to get into data just for uh, curiosity, this firewall has been fantastic in addition to all the other things. You can see I've got the VPN server enabled, I've got the ad block. You can see the mode is router mode for my firewall and bridge mode for my amplify alien, and it is monitoring. If I turn on monitoring, that means it's monitoring the entire traffic. So pretty cool, pretty helpful data usage. Um, this is what my data usage looks like. I can turn on or off a monthly data plan if I am on that. So a lot of different things that you can do. VPN client, uh, I've got uh, firewall wireguard. I thought I turned it on, but I don't know why it's uh, turned off, but I'll look into that. Um, actually, let's uh, go into wireguard and uh, see if we can firewall home. We've turned it on. You can see the VPN is connected and 
Oh, I think what this, I, I think I know what that VPN is. That VPN is if I, so the VPN server is now on, it WireGuard is enabled and the different things. All right, cool. So yeah, DNS uh, over HTTPS, I've allowed it on, uh, I'm, I'm encrypting my HTTPS, uh, my DNS requests are also being encrypted. So pretty, pretty useful, pretty handy. Let's go back to WireGuard. Uh, turn off my VPN. So yeah, there you have it. Very nifty device. I love it. Uh, if you want to go buy it, I can vouch for it and I highly recommend it. All right. Thanks, everybody.